If you don't want to lose your footage and you don't want to waste any money when you're buying external SSDs, then this video is for you. One of the reasons you want to choose an external SSD is because putting all of your video files and your photos on those and then editing from those external SSDs saves you a lot of hard drive space on your main computer. And if you're like me and you edit off of Macs, you know that Apple charges a premium for their internal SSDs. And while those internal SSDs are extremely fast, you can get similar speeds out of external SSDs if you put them together with the right enclosures. When it comes to the marketing of external SSDs, there's a lot of information out there that seems to portray that you'll get certain speeds if you buy and spend a little extra. But the reality is that if you see any SSDs that say they have up to 2000 something megabits a second, and I mean right around 2000 megabits a second, they're counting on you having a USB 3.2 2x2 system in your computer, which no Macs have and almost no PCs have. So you won't see any benefit from upgrading to that particular drive. Instead, it's better to stay within the drives that say they have around 1000 megabits a second or do something like buy a Thunderbolt 3 drive or a Thunderbolt 4, Thunderbolt 3 enclosure and put your own SSD into it. Those will give you the most amount of speed for the hard drive or the SSD that you buy. And by the way, nobody sent me any of these. I purchased all of these SSDs on my own. I purchased the enclosures on my own and put them together and tested them over the last few months to see how all of them reacted and responded to a basic daily workflow or over the last couple of years. So if you're interested in picking these up, they are linked in the description. Those are affiliate links, which do help me out and will help me actually rebuild some of the cost of purchasing uh, almost a thousand dollars worth of SSDs. While I have highly recommend SanDisk in the past, over the last few years, there have been a really high number of failure rates, especially with the four terabyte version. So I would say until we see maybe something change out with that, probably don't buy the four terabyte version of the SanDisk SSDs. And now that I've probably guaranteed SanDisk will never sponsor a video on this channel, let's talk about all of the different SSDs. To start off with, the smallest and one of the most affordable is the Crucial X9 series or the Crucial X series. But again, don't buy the X10 version because that will give you no extra benefit while you'll be paying a little bit more. So this is the X9 Pro. It's a one terabyte version. It is the smallest SSD I could find. So if you want to save the absolute most amount of size, the X9 Pro is for you. It gets really good read and write speeds at about 850 megabits a second. And especially the X9 Pro version, because it has a metal uh, outer shell, it dissipates heat really well. The next SSD that I've been using for a couple of years now is the T7 Shield. Now I've used Samsung T5s for years and they've been fantastic. The T7 is also really good. But honestly, if you have a Mac, it actually doesn't have the best read and write speeds. I get around 450 to 500 megabits a second on average, and that's only when it's formatted in XFAT. It is a good solid SSD for storage though, and I've been really happy with the performance. It's small, thin, lightweight, somewhat ruggedized, and has this nice rubber material, so it does work well. And Samsung has been producing SSDs for a really long time, and they're really well-known, reputable brand to buy from. So I don't hesitate to recommend the Sam Samsung T7 Shield uh, SSDs if you're looking for a good, reliable SSD out there. Then we come to the SanDisk. Now, while the SanDisk is actually probably one of the most affordable options out there, the four terabyte versions are the ones that have had a lot of problems. So if you're gonna buy a one terabyte version or a two terabyte version, I wouldn't be so concerned but I would stay away from the four terabyte versions for now, or at least until we hear that they're improved. That being said, I've been using this one for about three years and it has been fantastic. We'll get into ways to mitigate risk from losing footage in just a little bit, but uh, yeah, this has been a great drive for me. This is the SanDisk G Drive SSD Professional, which is a four terabyte version. It's more expensive. It does get good read and write speeds and it handles editing sessions really well. I've used this one for about two and a half years and it has been rock solid for me. It's also a really nice drive. You can see it's got some abuse on it, but it's uh, gone with me a lot of places and handled everything I've thrown at it. And then really stepping up in price because we're jumping into the Thunderbolt 3 territory, which if you're going to offload or load a lot of footage really quickly, that's where you have to be because this is where you're gonna get those extremely fast speeds. But if you don't wanna build your own enclosure and you don't wanna take the risk of putting your own SSDs in an enclosure, then this is the option for you. This is the SanDisk Professional. It is an extremely fast built 
uh, drive that comes ready to go. Now the issue with these is, is that it does handle heat well and it will transfer a lot of footage extremely quickly, but it will slow down over time as it gets warmer. So you either need to keep it cool with a small fan if you're gonna transfer a lot, like a terabyte of video footage or a terabyte of information at once, but if you're just transferring a few hundred gigabytes at once, it will handle that no problem. And it edits off of this no, uh, without any issues. But it does get warm as you're editing. In fact, all of these will get a little bit warm as you're editing. And then we come to your own enclosure. Now I've tried ones from Orico, I've tried ones from Acasis, and I've tried ones from uh, with fans and without fans, and they all perform really well. They'll all get 3000 something megabits of read and write speeds. They will all handle transferring about a terabyte of information until they, and then they will start to slow down as they heat up. But again, you can mitigate this by putting a small fan near them to just move air across. As soon as you do that, they stay cool and they keep their maximum read and write speeds basically indefinitely. And this is where if you're okay with tinkering and putting your own system together, you'll get the most bang for your buck because you can buy these extremely fast Samsung 990 Pros or other Western Digital out, uh, SSDs out there, put them in the enclosures and get incredibly fast speeds for uh, the price that you're gonna pay for these SSDs. But I wanted to see what the best or fastest out there, and that's where OWC actually put out this Express enclosure, which is a USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4 enclosure, and it is extremely fast. It's also really big, really heavy. It's a huge block of aluminum heatsink, which does help the drive handle extremely high volumes of read and writes uh, really well. I've edited it off of this, and it's performed exceptionally well. Now, the downside is, of course, that it is big and it is heavy, but if you're going to do something without a fan, this enclosure is absolutely fantastic and it will handle some pretty heavy duty loads being placed on it. Now there is another option if you're wanting an, an SSD with decent read and write speeds. This one here is basically, this is an internal SSD from Samsung. This is my main edit drive that lives on my desk for my Mac but it maxes out at about 450 to 500 megabits a second. So it's not terribly fast. It's plenty fast enough for 4K footage and even the 8K footage off of my A1. But, and, and uh, yeah. And I've even edited 8K RAW from the Inspire 3 all on this hard drive. And while this is very cost efficient and it does not heat up and does not have any thermal issues, at least none that I've been able to experience, it's not the best for people who are on the running gun because you have this uh, SATA uh, interface here and you can use it with a laptop using a cable like this. But the issue is, is that this is extremely brittle and if you break it, you're pretty much done and whatever footage you add on here is going to be toast. So while this is an option, if you're looking to save some money, I wouldn't recommend it if you're on the go just because of the, uh, the risk of being able to lose this interface and break it and not be able to access any of your data. Now, in order to be able to get your footage off of your SD card, you're gonna need a card reader. And I always recommend taking extra cards with you. And that's where the PGY Tech CF Express CreateMate card reader case comes into play. Now they did send this to me, um, but they're not sponsoring this video and no money changed hands. But I've been using it for the last few weeks and I've gotta say it's pretty impressive. It's IP54 rated, which means dust and water won't be able to get in. It has space for three SD cards, four micro SD cards, and in my case, I got the CF Express Type A version because I use that with my Sony cameras. But it also has a CF Express Type A or SD card reader built in, and it plugs into this USB C cable here, which comes out and then plugs into your laptop. It has a really good read and write speed. It can pull the footage off quickly and keep your extra cards safe while you're out on the go. So if you're looking for a card reader slash uh, card storage device to make sure you're never without storage because who hasn't showed up somewhere and realized they didn't have any SSD, SSD cards with you, then this is a great option. I've really been enjoying using it for the last couple of months. It's worked well. One thing I will say is that this card reader here is not a dual card reader. It will only read or mount one card at a time, but it does read the data really quickly and get it off of your SD card or off of your CF Express Type A card or B card. They have a couple of different options and on to your SSDs. So thanks PGY Tech for sending this over. It's been great to have with me. It's a nice rugged shell and it's held up really well and kept all my extra cards with me safe and dry. 
uh, as I've been running around in the winter here in Alaska. I don't often do videos like this, but I do wanna help you out more on the business side of being a creator. So you'll see more videos like this that hopefully are helpful to you in mitigating risk. And if you're enjoying or getting value out of this video, then consider subscribing. My goal is to help solo creators like myself make good decisions when it comes to purchasing gear and get the most out of that gear by teaching the skills you need to be able to create some fantastic content. So toward the beginning of this video, I said that SanDisk had been having a lot of failures with their four terabyte version of this car, of this SSD here. But there are some ways you can mitigate the risk of that and that's having a couple of these. And what I do is anytime I'm offloading footage from any shoot I do, I put them on two, at least two different SSDs so that if one does fail, I have a backup of another. And then as soon as I get back to the studio, I put all of that footage onto my NAS drive, which is set up to have a two hard drive failure. So two hard drives in my NAS drive can fail and I will still be able to rebuild and recover all of the data. Now that's pretty extreme, but if you work with clients and in my case where I've had to make the phone call to a client and let them know that the conference we had just been shooting for two days, I had lost a good portion of the footage of. If you never wanna to have to make a phone call like that to a client or never take the chance of losing footage, aside from backing up to a couple of these, SSDs are not meant for long-term storage. So getting them onto a spinning hard drive is good for long-term storage and putting them onto a NAS system or something that will have a hard drive redundancy in case a hard drive does fail is really important. For me, I picked the Synology, but there are some fantastic options out there from Synology, from OWC, and from others that you could look into. Now, if I was to do it over again, I would probably pick one of the ones from OWC that has a direct Thunderbolt connection. But for now, I'm super happy with the Synology that I got. It's got 10 gigabit ethernet, which goes to a switch and then goes to my Mac Studio, which also has 10 gigabits. So I can get up to 450 megabits or 500 megabits a second read and write speed, which means I can edit directly off the NAS if I want to. I generally don't, I still prefer editing off of SSDs because there's no lag and no delay of the spinning hard drives spinning up or uh, spinning down. However, it is the safest solution for backing up your storage or backing up your footage long-term. And then also backing it up to a cloud service like Backblaze or something like that is also really important or having an offsite backup where you take hard drives to another location just in case the absolute worst happens. Now, next, you're going to want to watch this video over here. I'll see you over there. As always, if you have questions, ask me in the comments below, or you can join my live stream, which happens most Wednesday nights at 4 p.m. Alaska time, 8 p.m. Eastern, where we can have more of a conversation and I can answer questions maybe that I didn't get to in this video. I'll see you again soon in the next one. Cheers.